So these are the top 50 fake preachers in the world. Number one, number two, what's happening? Num num number, number three, what are we doing here? Where's the list of fake preachers? Well, hey, yes, if you're here because you want to see a list of fake preachers, well, just give me a few minutes and I'm going to show you why this rising trend has become a very dangerous threat to the preaching of the gospel. In a few minutes, I'm going to show you why perhaps 90% of the people that are considered fake preachers are not fake preachers, why it's super dangerous for believers today to carry the mindset of always going around trying to prove why this is a fake preacher or that is a fake preacher. And of course, I'm not saying that there are no fake preachers. I'll also show you clear, cut, undoubtable signs, evidences on how to spot a fake preacher. So without any more drama, let's quickly go into it. So who is a fake preacher? There are a myriad of YouTube channels now that create loads and tons of videos trying to tell you why because this person said this they are a fake preacher because they disagreed with this opinion they're a fake preacher that's a very dangerous approach to the gospel because you are sent to not just receive the word of god from one preacher he says he has given some pastors evangelists all these people have something to contribute in your life so what I mean is, this particular person, God can use them to boost your faith. This other person, God used them to boost your healing. God used this other person to boost your spiritual experience with the Holy Spirit. So you as a believer, you are called to receive from a myriad of sources. So already painting a particular source or a potential source as a fake preacher already means you are never going to be able to benefit what they carry or what God sent them to bring to you. So the apparent test of just pointing out because this person said this or because they disagreed with this or because they made that statement, uh, no matter how sensitive, it's not enough to just conclude on someone as a fake preacher. It's important to understand fake means that they are not the original. And if you say they are a fake preacher, well, meaning that they are preaching a fake gospel, meaning that they are a fake representator of Christ. So to further identify who is a fake representator of Christ, it's important that you first know what the representative of Christ is supposed to look like, what they are supposed to stand for, and what are the you know key principles, fundamental principles, because that's where you differentiate between the original and a fake is at the fundamental principles you can have a hundred dollar bill and it's torn now it is a torn bill it doesn't look the way a brand new bill is but it doesn't necessarily mean that's a fake bill it just means that's a bill with a defect so that bill has a problem but it doesn't make that bill a fake bill you can still patch it up you can still make purchases with it so it's a totally valid bill it may have some creeps it may have some oil on it it may have some tension on it it doesn't automatically make it a fake bill what is a fake bill a fake bill therefore is a bill that doesn't have the key markings that were printed into the original bills at the point of manufacturing and that's the only distinguishing factor for a fake hundred dollar bill and an original hundred dollar bill so what are the fundamental principles, like in the case of a banknote, those key characteristics that are printed in manufacturing for you to be able to tell an original preacher from a fake preacher? Well, I can just reduce them that there are three fundamental principles, even though there are more than that, but these three are key. Number one, Second John chapter 1 verse 7 tells us, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, refusing to confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. And you see the same thing in First John. 4 verse 2 say by this you would know the spirit of god every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come in the flesh is from god and in verse 1 it actually tells us beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirit to see whether they are from god for many false prophets have gone out into the world so the bible is itself telling you there are false prophets and this is how you distinguish them the first principle is that jesus is the son of god and he has come in the flesh so anyone who preaches or does not preach that jesus is the son of god and he appeared in the flesh that is the fundament, one fundamental principle for a fake preacher. The second fundamental principle is the approach to salvation. Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 38. So when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and asked Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And so this is the road to salvation. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there 
at the first sermon that the Apostle Peter is preaching after the Holy Spirit has descended upon them, the call to salvation or the roadmap to getting saved is not by joining a club, it's not by just you know joining a membership, it's not just by saying random words or repeating uh, a phrase that someone is repeating after you, but he is saying that the people must repent in their hearts. They must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins and they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the key to salvation is repentance, is surrender to Christ, is receiving Christ, receiving Christ through his Holy Spirit. That is a fundamental principle number two. So any other person who preaches something contrary to this as the roadmap to salvation is a fake preacher. And the third fundamental principle is is how you're saved ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 it says for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourselves it is the gift of god not by works so that no one can boast so any gospel that tells you it's by you doing good things that you're a good person or it's by you caring and giving and being philanthropic that is a fake gospel that is from a fake preacher so these are three fundamental principles that outline the original gospel the right preachers from the fake preachers because from these spring every other important tenet or aspect of the gospel of the kingdom all the kingdom principles of giving on the holy spirit on purity on holiness righteousness all of them would fall in line if the people acknowledge that christ came died on the cross for them if the gospel acknowledges that for them to be saved they need to repent turn away from their old life and pick up the life of christ through his holy spirit getting baptized and getting saved and overall the acknowledge that it's not by their works but by christ therefore they have to continue to surrender to him because they are never boastful or proud or think they are better than the unbeliever then every other tenet of the gospel will spring out very easily from those three so why is this important because remember fundamentally when jesus left he gave us one mission which is to go and make disciples in his name that we just saw in acts chapter 2 that is the mission of the church so if any preacher has a wrong interpretation or misunderstanding of any other topic other than these fundamental principles i don't think it's enough to conclude on them as a fake preacher because those are things you can make mistake from you can learn better in the future you can uh, recognize that you erred and you come and apologize you see but you can't err on how people get saved you know that is a fundamental thing you can't err on jesus coming in the flesh being the son of god saved by grace through faith those are not things you can walk back because if people are not safe, you're not doing anything, okay? You may err on prosperity or not prosperity. That is not really a critical matter that affects the salvation of souls. You may disagree on people's point of views on healings. You may disagree on people's point of views on whether women should preach or not preach, uh, tie head scarves or not tie head scarves, wear jewelry, not wear jewelry, whether you must read the Bible in the Hebrew or in the Amharic or in the Aramaic. Those are things that may be important but they are not critical enough to you to conclude that this person is a fake preacher or that person is not a fake preacher because if we are all honest at some point in time in our lives we had a wrong interpretation of scripture so imagine with that interpretation you innocently did not have the right interpretation and so you went about preaching it so someone now calls you out as a fake preacher now you go and study further and you later realize that you had made a mistake you change you repent and then you start getting the understanding right now what about all the things that they have already said you are a fake preacher because of a misunderstanding of something that was not a fundamental principle so if everyone at some point in time erred in their interpretation of a scripture it therefore means that if you want to point out the reason why someone is a fake preacher everyone is going to be a fake preacher so i think we don't have fake preachers so much as we have a lot of preachers that may be missing on one thing or missing on another thing that could range from their interpretation of a particular subject matter maybe out of their personal biases and emotions to their own failures in their personal life their character uh, all the scandals they have been embroidered in that is just the same as you and i as believers 
making mistakes failing in our own spiritual lives also misinterpreting the scripture have you ever considered yourself as a fake christian no you have told yourself okay i'm a believer who is struggling and i'm making progress likewise we may have not fake preachers but preachers that are failing in particular aspects of their lives so it's up to every believer to be smart enough to know how far is too far and to know what you're getting from each person and what you're not getting because if i can acknowledge that okay this person this is what they have for me but i'm not going to copy their views or their aspect and their thoughts on this other aspect then that is in my own interest to gain what i can gain and protect myself from this person's failures but of course as i promised we're not going to live without a clear cut way of spotting fake preachers i said 90 percent it could be less than that so in any case there are still fake preachers in our midst i'm just worried at the trend in which now we are almost just using an arbitrary way of picking fake preachers that i mean i myself could qualify on that maybe this is a fake preaching youtube channel i don't know well <laughs> but we're still going to go ahead anyway so uh yeah things the bible tells us about other things the bible tells us about spotting fake preachers number one jesus said by their fruits we shall know them remember i said there is a difference between someone having a misunderstanding on a minor issue say you know that people believe that uh healing doesn't happen miraculous healings doesn't happen you won't say that is a fake preacher because he doesn't believe that someone can be supernaturally healed no they may have every other thing right but that's an aspect which they are still to come to understanding about you you, you understand that However, that is different from someone who has deliberately, and it's not just that they are ignorant, but they have deliberately settled on the misinformation or the wrong interpretation of scripture and they are championing it for whatever intentional nefarious purposes they may have in their hearts. And that's where Jesus talks now about, by their fruits, you shall know them. So someone can have the fundamental principles correct and have a whole bunch of things right, they preach powerfully, they manifest the spirit, but the fruits of the spirit holiness purity kindness are not in them they go about continuously intentionally like i've just said living an immoral life or living a life that is against god you know intentionally continuously that is where you have to obviously stay clear of such people just like the apostle paul said they should not even eat in the same bowl with the sexual immoral person that was in their church but yet again do they qualify so much as a fake preacher or just so much as a poor preacher who is not applying the things that they are preaching because the gospel is right but the vessel is broken the banknote still has its value of a hundred dollars but it is torn it's greasy it's twisted so what do you do you try to patch it up so that it can recoup its original value that it still has trapped in it if it's torn into two it still has a buying power of $100, but it needs to be fixed. Remember, the scriptures tell us that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Therefore, means that when God has blessed someone with a specific gift of the Holy Spirit, even if they fail in character, God is not going to take it away. Because first and foremost, God didn't bless them with it for themselves. He blessed them with it for the church. That's why Apostle Paul could say, after I have preached, I must beat my own self with discipline lest i be rejected at the end so you can live a completely hazardous life in secret and yet you still bless people and lead multitudes to heaven and on the last day you are not found worthy the second point very close to by their fruits is also fake okay if you have to fake miracles it means you are a fake person right it doesn't matter if you're very keen with the fundamental principles which we just mentioned and more the fact is if you have to fake a healing it means in the way you're acknowledging that you don't believe that jesus heals so someone faking miracles faking testimony is a fruit right and by their fruits we shall know them they may publicly preach or stand with those fundamental tenets but that may just be verbal accent but their fruits are showing that they don't believe those things and what that's why they are ready to fake them just so that they can get whatever they want and usually they seek power and they try to enrich themselves and ultimately the final fruit is glorifying exalting 
themselves instead of exalting Christ. So the moment you see a place where the focus is around exalting the humans in the place, magnifying them, rather instead of giving glory to Jesus, giving glory to the Holy Spirit, giving glory to the Father, then you know that you're not dealing with an original ambassador of Christ. There are a whole lot of things as far as this topic is concerned and it might be a little bit more complex than these but I hope in just this few minutes you've been able to get a picture of what I'm actually emphasizing. There are cases that it's obviously clear by their fruits that these people are evil wolves in sheep clothing and there are cases where these people just perhaps have a misunderstanding on one minor issue or another minor issue. I'm not really saying they are minor, but I'm saying they are not the principal thing as far as getting saved and growing in Christ is concerned. So it's important that you should be able to distinguish those cases. And then there is the group that actively talk against the fundamental principles. They are the Christ or Christ didn't come in the flesh or they don't need to be saved. They don't need to repent. Uh, they don't even need to, to surrender their lives to Christ. When Christ died, everyone uh, has been saved, whether they confess or not. You know, there are a lot of all these shaky uh, new age and all these kind of new things you're seeing out there. Ultimately, the most guaranteed way to differentiate a real preacher from a fake preacher is the Holy Spirit. So remember, you also have direct access to God and direct access to the Holy Spirit. So if you submit to him and trust him, he's going to lead you to the right people and the right places where you are to receive the right things that you need per time for your spiritual growth and your kingdom experience and exploits on the earth. So that's in the video. What do you think about fake preachers? Who do you think is a fake preacher? How should we spot them? I really like to also hear from you in the comments below. So please share all of that in the comments and let's have some discussion about it. Well, so give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and uh, a big shout out to our patrons who will help us continue creating content like this. Uh, if you feel that like YouTube can support this channel, the links are down below. So thank you so much. I'm Buddha's Jumesi from Wisdom for Dominion and I'll see you in the next video.